A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. Position vector of A is I minus J. I think I'm going to, because we're working in two dimensions, I'm just going to roughly be, well, accurate. So there we go. That can be point A at 1, 1. And then the position vector of B is 3I plus 5J. So around about here for B. Might do it in a different color. And we're asked for length AB. So what I'm going to do is work out vector AB first. And to get from A to B, I can go minus OA plus OB or OB minus OA, second minus the first. You might also write it as little b minus little a if you want to say that they are the position vectors. In any case, we're going to get 3, 5. I'm writing it in vector form now. Minus 1, 1, but you don't have to, which gives you 2, 4, or 2i plus 4j. And that means that AB, we can use Pythagoras' theorem, because it's just, you know, we go along 2 and up 4. We, get, we can create this right angle triangle, 2 squared plus 4 squared, square rooted, which gives root 20. You can simplify it to 2 root 5 if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as root 20. Now we're told that the position vector of C is PI plus PJ. So it's going in the same kind of direction. It's, we don't know exactly where it is, but I'll put it here for the moment. I can write it like this, and then we're told that the length AB is equal to the length BC. So we know that AB is root 20. Therefore, let's do a very similar thing and work out BC in terms of P. It's going to be PP minus 3, 5. Same argument as before, which gives P minus 3, P minus 5. And that means that BC or BC squared is going to be P minus 3 squared plus P minus 5 squared. And I know that's equal to AB squared. So AB squared is 20. I can just set it equal to 20. I've just got a quadratic to solve now. So let's expand it. Double brackets. I've got P minus 3 times P minus 3, remember. So you get these cross terms p squared minus, not minus 3p, minus 3p, I can just write that as minus 6p, plus 9, plus p squared minus 10p, then plus 25 is equal to 20. That means 2p squared minus 16p, and the 9 and 25 give me 34, minus the 20 gives me 14. Divide through by 2. I mean, you can stick it in your calculator, but I'm going to divide through by 2. P squared minus 8p plus 7 is 0. P minus 1 times P minus 7 is 0. So P equals 1, which I'm going to reject because P is greater than 1. You might want to write that down just to, just to explain why you're rejecting it. Or 7. So that means that the position vector of C is going to be 7, 7. I'll just write OC equals 7, 7. Good. So 7, 7 actually means that I'm going to need to move it quite further forward. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, maybe around about here. Okay, if I'm trying to keep my sketch reasonably accurate. Right, on to the next bit. We're told that M is the midpoint of AC. Let me put it here. Might just change the color actually. Now it's given that MD is equal to 2BM. We're asked to determine the position vector of D. 
So let's first of all work out what AC is. That's going to be 7, 7, minus 1, 1. It's going to give me 6, 6. And because M is the midpoint, that means AM is going to be a half of that. It's going to be 3, 3. And that means that OM, the position vector of M, is going to be OA plus AM. So it's going to be 1, 1 plus 3, 3. OM is 4, 4. Right, now I'm going to say that the position vector of D is just x, y for the moment, and that's what I'm going to be aiming to find. So M, D will equal x, y minus 4, 4. So x minus 4, y minus 4. And then I need to find out what B, M is. So that's going to be OM, which is 4, 4, minus OB, which I think I have right at the start, 3, 5. So this gives me 1 minus 1. And therefore, I can use, I can use this. It must be that x minus 4, y minus 4 is equal to 2 times BM, so 2 minus 2. That means x is going to be 6, y is going to be 2. We're there. OD is going to be 6, 2. It's a little bit fiddly, isn't it? But just you just got using these same ideas we used right at the start to get the vectors and just carefully work your way through it. That's my advice. Okay, so 6, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. D is going to be about here. And finally, I've drawn it roughly to scale, so we should be able to kind of get a feeling of what's going on. We've got A. Hold on, I'm going to actually make it a bit thicker. So A to B, B to C, and then to D, and then to A. All right, it doesn't look like any kind of special quadrilateral, would be fair, but that's because I've not drawn it accurately enough. You can see it's not going to be a square or a rectangle. Could it be a, a rhombus? Um, or could it be a parallelogram, maybe a trapezium, maybe a kite? So I, we just have to investigate this now. Um, and what I decided to do is I worked out what, well, we had AB from the start. It was, where was it gone? 2, 4. So I decided to find out CD to see if they were parallel. That seemed to be a good idea. Actually, uh, BC, because then it'll be exactly like uh, it's, they're going in the same direction. So DC is going to be OC, which remember was uh, 7, 7, minus 6, 2. So that gives me 1, 5. Um, and so, yeah, not power AB is not parallel to BC, which means it's not a parallelogram, or and therefore not also a rhombus. Okay, then I thought, right, we've um, we've worked out the length of AB before. It was root twenty, so let's work out the length of CD. That's going to be 5 squared plus 1 squared, square rooted, which is root 26. Okay, let's work out the length of AD. So AD is going to be 6, 2, minus 1, 1, which gives 5, 1. And therefore AD is also going to be root 26. Now again in somewhere, because we have this kind of shape. We've just seen that it was um, AB was root 20. This one's root 26, and this one is root 26. So these two are the same. Therefore, let's work out BC. And remember, we worked out uh, that P was 7, so it's going to be 4, 2, because B 
DC. Therefore, the length is going to be 4 squared plus 2 squared, 20 square rooted. It's root 20 again. And that is enough to say it's going to be a kite. Could be quicker ways to do this, but I'm just telling you how I did it. As long as you're, you know, you're making an argument. I, I, there's, there's other ways you can do it. You can show that the diagonals are perpendicular and all sorts of other things. Um, but just make sure you're... I wouldn't go into finding angles, to be honest. I think lengths is a good way to go. So ABCD is a kite. Okay, well done on this question.